their caution too, but we'll have to see how today goes. Harold, what sort of actions uh, were warranted in your portfolio with the action that we saw last week? Were you doing quite a bit of selling or you know, were you already a, a bid in cash? Were you finding buying opportunities? What, uh, what was going on in your portfolio last week? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I was already, uh, not already, but I had started uh, reducing my cash, uh, my stock position because I saw a lot of breakouts not working. Okay, they'd hit the traditional pivot and then pull back. And when you see a lot of that uh, almost across the board, that's a sign there's just something not right with the market. And then over the weekend, um, what I do every weekend as far as, you know, there was a lot of talk about the breadth of the market. I My definition of breadth is the number of stocks participating in a trend. And what I've seen over the last month or so is there's a list in Market Smith called weekly, weekly stocks approaching or at new highs. A month ago, that list was over 200 stocks. Just this past weekend is at 112. So that's telling me that um, there's a lot of stocks that are not participating in this uptrend. And we know that's not gonna continue. And sure enough, here we are with the stock, with the market pulling back. Um, if you want to see that list in Mark Smith, you just go to uh, Open Stock Ideas and then Weekly Review. And then the third, uh, the fourth list down. Yes, yeah, so that one there. Okay, so I look at that every week and the list has dropped significantly, significantly over the last uh, uh, month or so, last four or five weeks. Yeah, so we're uh, seeing a lot of damage. We will get into how the industry groups shook out uh, in the different changes. We always try to monitor what are the leading groups doing, what shifts we're seeing underneath the surface. And Ed, we're now seeing the Qs, which tracks the NASDAQ 100, finally coming down to its 21-day line for the first time in quite a while. Yeah, I guess that's the only positive in a way is that you know, some of these uh, big cap, the mega cap tax are coming off sort of their relentless rise. But yeah, the breadth of the market doesn't looking good. It just, it's been weaker and weaker. Uh, it's now sort of obvious that the market is weakening. And I, I, the indexes don't look good, but as Harold was mentioning, it's various ways of looking underneath the surface. I mean, look, just looking at your stocks, leading stocks were, were, were either breaking down or coming back to buy points, depending on where they were. Uh, just, it was really, really hard. It's hard to see how you made money aside from a handful of stocks if you were really lucky on that. I think that's something that Harold pointed out the last couple of weeks, the GMIAB is a great thing to look at as well. The advanced decline line for the NASDAQ, uh, you know, that's really weakened. At first it was like, oh, okay, it isn't the greatest, it's not the worst, but then it's really come off in July. And if you just look at anything, all these sectors and I know you and I were looking at a bunch of sectors on the SMT video on Friday and it was just like, they're all just sort of, first they sort of hovered and then they really came over in, in the last week. That's exactly right. I think also worth looking at small caps, uh, futures indicated down over 2%. We're seeing IWM down about 1.9% right now. Uh, Justin, can you talk about the damage that we're seeing for small caps and what that means? Well, I think the small caps really kind of sent an early warning. They just weren't participating. They, it, you know, it was, it was showing weakness, you know, below the 50-day moving average line earlier. Um, whereas the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 were making, um, were making strides into new high ground, uh, the Russell 2000 just wasn't, you know. And and so, and and you know, another thing that did concern me, and you know, we talked about this over the last couple of weeks, is if you look at SMH, um, it it seemed weird to me that. The semiconductors, you know, did seem like they were, early, you know, showing some early signs of leadership, um, but, you know, SMH just never really launched uh, either. It, it just really didn't make that much uh, move, of a move into new high ground. Um, so, you know, okay, so if SMH, you know, if the semiconductors aren't leading, you know, if the um, small caps aren't, you know, involved, it's kind of like, well, what? what is what's doing it and then we kept on coming back to it was the trillion dollar club the the microsoft apple um those very few stocks that were heavily weighted in the nasdaq and the s p 500 that were kind of driving a lot of that um you know forward so i think uh, again you have to you have to have your leadership somewhere and it's got to be more than 
a handful of stocks doing it. So uh, the, the, I, I think this is, again, a good thing for the market to get a little bit more, um, you know, a, a, a little bit of a corrective phase, uh, allow some of these setups to, to create. And again, we'll see if this is another buy on the dip thing, you know, if, if it just snaps back immediately, or uh, can we get a little bit more of, of, of a corrective phase, a, a little bit more sideways action, let these moving averages kind of catch up and, you know, maybe some more setups in the small caps and mm -hmm. uh, semis and other areas of tech. Right. And Harold, speaking of these mega cap stocks, I could imagine some investors in our audience being uh, maybe a little bit concerned about what they're seeing. Do you think that if you bought these stocks right, like a Microsoft, for example, that you should be doing anything at this moment? What would you be looking at to warrant start starting to peel off some of that position, seeing the stock really breaking below the 21 day line, because uh, at least for Microsoft and a number of the other mega caps, they haven't even come down to their 10 day lines until yeah. today along these advances. Yeah. So first off, a lot depends on when you bought the stock. So if you bought the stock at the traditional pivot at 263.19, you're in pretty good shape. And I believe with a market like this, some of your large caps are going to be a, um, uh, somewhat of a flight to safety because uh, institutions, you know, they have to be in the market. They tend to go to your large cap stocks and something like Microsoft is a good place to park money. Now, uh, if, if you if you happen to be in the stock uh, around the pivot, um, you're in good shape. That, that, that trade below the 10 day moving average, not much of a concern. You should expect that in this market. What you want to see is the stock showing some relative strength versus the market. You know, Microsoft is only down, you know, it's down less than, less than yeah. a percent. The overall market is down about a percent. So uh, it is holding up well. So that's what I'd be looking for. So if you happen to be in this, in this stock or like Google, same, same situation. It's, yeah, well, it's down a little bit more than the market, but it's finding support at the 21 day exponential. So uh, the large cap stocks should be holding up well. And uh, if you're in them, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too quick on the trigger as far as selling. Mm -hmm. And Ed, Justin mentioned the weakness in chips, ASML coming down to its 50 day line here, just two days ahead of earnings. So how would you assess the action that we're seeing here? Well, it's an important, important day, uh, I think, for ASML and a lot of chips, I think, for the market. I mean, we obviously it's trying to hold that 50 day line. And, you know, that's important. Uh, I mean, unless you bought it a long time ago, I, I don't know why you'd want to be holding this into earnings and, you know, kind of thing. I mean, maybe there, it's just, yeah, if you bought it somewhere in there, perhaps, but certainly not in the last few months, there's really not any kind of gain that you have, you know, or not significant. Uh, so that would just seem like, but we'll see how that goes. Um, it is trying to hold there. It'll be interesting to see if it can. NVIDIA, uh, looked like it was going to be down 2% in the pre-market at one point. Now it's holding up. See, that was getting, you know, not too close to the 50-day, but it was sort of getting close to the 10-week 10, 10 line. Certainly if it had, you know, when it was trading at the open, before the open, it was basically, you know, there in pre-market at the 10-week line. So that would be nice to see that hold because you could argue this is sort of like, yeah, it's not as important as, say, an Apple or Microsoft, but this was sort of like the big winner among a big cap tech clearly just powering ahead and um, made you feel better about the whole market. Uh, so I think it's really important that this one holds. Well, if we see that uh, sort of overall buy the dip action that Justin was mentioning and NVIDIA can power higher from here, would that be a buying opportunity or was just the, the action of last week uh, a little bit too severe and you'd want it to take a little bit more time for a new setup? Well, I think this is where some of that, uh, this is where some of the issues are. It's like, it's so, e you know, if this bounces back, I mean, one, I didn't like how hard it fell. So yeah. that's a pretty sharp drop. You know, those last few days, I prefer a pullback to have at least more gradual. Um, this was pretty much straight down toward the 10 week line. And look, it's always easy after the fact, if the pullback works and it's not always clear right away. Sometimes like this one could bounce 3% today and then tomorrow fall 6% because, you know, we've seen that with some, some pullbacks, you know, in recent weeks, I, I, I'm not predicting that, but I'm just saying is that uh, it looks obvious if it works. Oh, look, you just buy it and then it flies. It's like, well, 